nine and a half years ago, I left Scientology. So it was July 2013 when I left and didn't go back. Um, it wasn't an easy transition and it was certainly a difficult time um, just recovering from um, Scientology, the subject, the language, um, and then losing friends and eventually my ex over time. But that turned out, turned out to be a good thing in the end anyway, so um, I don't totally feel bad about it. Um, I'm definitely happier now and thriving in life. So um, my journey began almost 10 years ago in the summer um, in Brighton, England. And I was body rooted into Brighton Org to do an OCA test. After I did the test, I was sold on the Dianetics book and I did um, a course on communication. Um, eventually, over time, I did the Pure of NTRs and Objectives and that's as high as I got on the bridge or a, as I like to call it the ladder because that's what it looks like <laughs> um anyway eventually i became a staff member and there were some experiences that were not great um there were a few that were but overall i think being in that kind of mindset where um, I had to perform all the time and initially I was there all day um, and then over time I, I changed my schedule to um, be evenings and weekends so during the day I would uh, work on my writing or do chores or anything else I needed to do and in the evening I'd make my way over to the org um, at times I'd be on course, other times, most of the time, I was selling books. I was the bookstore officer and there were there was high demand every day to sell loads and loads of books. And I remember the Golden Era rep from New, from Copenhagen, would phone every day, sometimes twice a day, to ask me how many books I sold and how much it was. And it was more of a love-hate relationship. Well, more of a hate than a love relationship. Um, we weren't on the best of terms for sure. There was lots of shouting on her term, on her side, and me hang hanging up the phone on my side. Um... I just started standing up for myself more and I didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, feel like I was being shouted at or made to feel like I wasn't doing as much as I could. And, um, well, during that time I definitely grew more as a person, not that because of those experiences specifically um just naturally over time um and there were instances that were certainly not called for because they were definitely abusive emotionally mentally and a few times there were some physically abusive abusive times um there was one that sticks in my mind more because it physically hurts. It did physically hurt a lot, quite a lot. So, um, we played a lot of games, book selling games, and there was one specific one where we came second in place and we had to be 
upset three weeks in a row and the executive director um, did a lot of the registration in the organization and she did um, she was involved in the book series quite a lot as well it was a tiny org it was the amount of people in it was tiny so uh, we didn't have a lot of people coming and going so I guess in a way you could say we had to outsource the public from other orgs or from St. Hill or wherever we could get them and when I told her that we didn't win the game um, she got really angry and started shouting and started grabbing me and putting me towards the auditor and wanting to put me on the e-meter to get like all my OWs, overwritten withholds, or as I like to, or as I like to call them, uh, to try to get my sins out. And um, and if you're a staff member or a young member, you know that we're all so busy that we're too busy to do anything wrong. And so these wrongs could be anything. It can be ridiculous. Um, it was a very traumatic time and I kept, I held on to the side of the door and she was trying to pry my fingers off the side of the door and I was just almost shouting back at, I wasn't really shouting back, I was just, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, like almost begging, begging her saying that, um, and I didn't do anything wrong that um to let me go, uh things like that. And she was squeezing my arms really hard and they were bruised that uh they were really bruised and um the auditor was busy so I was left to go home and the next day I was dragged back to be put in the meter to be forced to, you know, say what my OWs were. At one point in the room with the door locked, I just put the cans on the table and I I protested and I was like, nope, I'm not doing this, I didn't do anything wrong and so on. I won't go into detail. Um, it's It's still hard, you know, looking back recovering from that time period um i'm sure anyone who's been in the or staff member knows that it takes quite some time to recover from being a scientologist um over time i discovered more things about the subject the the actual truth about it the stories of ex-members from mike rinder's blog and um, I was kind of shocked. <laughs> I had no idea that all the things that was put out about LRH were edited quite heavily um, to make it seem more uh, digestible to the public and the staff members and the CEOG members. And, and I guess there were CEOG members that were editing the videos and the tapes to make it seem more palatable and to make LOH seem more um, kind of like a hero in a way. Anyway, it's been almost 10 minutes now and I'll, I'll leave you for now. I might talk about this a later time, I might not, um, or I might make shorts. So, so my story is that um, during that time period when Katie Holmes uh, left Tom Cruise uh, there was a lot of press about it and I would look it up on my phone um, my personal relationship at that point was not great and I recognised it as that it became more 
uh, abusive and I had to do something about it so as soon as I got a job I couldn't take my smartphone with me because my ex was paying for that and everything else um, so yeah as soon as I got paid on my first job I was looking for other places to live and I got a burner phone so once I found the place that I liked on a quiet afternoon I moved out and that was the last day I will, there was one story I will tell you another day but for now it's goodbye